All right, I have four o'clock. I'm gonna call this meeting to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Here. 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 All right, uh, agenda changes. Uh, I'm gonna propose that we move item AC to A to 6F. So 6C to 6F, because uh, I know there's been a lot of questions and discussions and I want, um, want to give us the due time to discuss that. So if you don't mind, I'll move 6C to 6F. Okay. All right, we have no guest speakers. So public comment on any agenda item only. I know we have some guests here today um, and I mean, we might have some folks online as well. If you'd like to come up and introduce yourself, please limit your comments to three minutes, please. And we'll go from there. Hi. Start with me. Okay. Hi, I'm Marta Petter. I own the Bay Building next door. Mm -hmm. um, 110 um, Butler Street is the store, but my residential entrance is at 111 Water Street. Um, my mother owns 132 through 140 Butler, so we own lots of property here and we're property um, taxpayers. I also landscape and help maintain the side yard here with the city. Um, when I bought the Bay Building, I was so impressed with the view because I had marina, I had city park, and I had parking spaces. And I thought, well, within my lifetime, that's not going to change. I know you don't buy your view, but I just didn't think it was going to change. So um, I rent my properties a vacation rental in the high season. Um, and anyway, let me go back to this. I rent as a vac vacation rental in the high season. I live in it in off season, off and on as I can. The cell tower will be placed directly in front of my residence. It'll be above the trees. It'll be right in front of my view to, to the water. Um, under code 1604D, the pole shall not be located in the line with a side lot line and not in front of a residence. And that is what I consider my residence as does Morrow's. They live there and they have a rental next door. Um, we all like to say not in my backyard. I know there's a lot of issues here, not in my backyard, but that's kind of the backyard for the city too. It's the last kind of open area where everybody looks out where we have Venetian Festival, 4th of July, all that. So um, looking at it, when I look at the design, it's a 42 foot pole when you add the receivers on the top. That's a four story building in front of us. Um, we can't build four story buildings. We've got a height restriction. So I don't know why, if you're looking at this, if you can look at your section 1606 and tell me how are you gonna, how are you gonna camouflage this or make it fit in with the, with the area here? I just don't understand that. I'm sorry I'm coming in a little late on this. Um, <clears throat> this impacts my property value as I've seen published data, it can impact it by a decrease of 15% or more. And that will hurt my rental business and my rentals will not like the view I mean, there have been lawsuits, you know, filed against cities for this kind of thing. So I, I just, that's, I'm just going to state that. Um, it's stated in the application that it's a site acquisition. Are they acquiring the site like a street end? Are they paying monthly rent like a, like a restaurant is? I mean, it's not actually a parking space, but motorcycles and little cars park there all summer long. We have a real parking problem, and I don't know what you're doing by giving them that whole space. Um, well, the data is inconclusive. I don't like cell towers. I'm worried about 5G. I don't know about the health. I don't know what we're going to find out on the road, but I don't like it within that close to my house. And I don't know what the boaters think. And I don't know what my renters are going to think. So um, it also shows in the plan connecting power lines. Now, all of our power lines are on the east side. So now you're going to run more power lines over in front of our view. And I'm really concerned about even more stuff. I already looked through a bunch of power lines, but to look through even more, I just, that, that's just, it's like nuts. So anyway. Um, I want to know, I have some questions. Oh, I'll give you copies of this. Uh, what alternatives were there considered, like other Paul poles? Um, did you consider putting it in a service area down here? Are you precluded? That's it? I'm out. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I've only been on two poles. It's very obvious. It works. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you. All right. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Morrow. Hi, everybody. Wow. Hi. I've got some. <laughs> An educator. An educator. Thank you.
Okay, uh, my name is Frank Morrow. Uh, my family owns a restaurant at 147 Water Street, right down at the end of the street here. We've been in business for 52 years. Um, and uh, this came up yesterday on my email and I was a little surprised. So I did a little digging, you know, that's what I do, right? Um, so what I got here is uh, your first page is going to be is a city of uh, Saugatuck Historic District Commission. Their minutes from the September 2nd, 2021 meeting, which they approved this, this structure. Um, and what it says here is that, you know, they, they, they found a struct, the, the, the company came with a structure that was right outside here. You could see that on page two is the first picture. Um, that, that would be the fir first structure that was shown. And actually the only structure that was shown here. was that structure there. And the, and the committee decided they didn't, you know, they didn't like it on green space. And that's, that's all well and good. But what they did was they approved moving it to the other side of Singapore Yacht Club's driveway. Now their intention might've been to put it underneath where the dumpsters reside in the Singapore Yacht Club uh, parking lot. Mm -hmm. But they approved, they just approved it. So the picture on page four is, is, what, is what they got. But the historic commission, I don't believe even saw that picture. Had they and approved that, then I'd have a real issue with the historic commission because that picture on page four is, is not, you know, it's just, it's crazy. It's, um, I've been looking outside my windows for since I was 10 years old and I see the same thing every day and I love it. And, and I'm passionate about my community and, uh, but I'm also passionate about my business, which is over here. And I've got people looking out and the first thing they see out of the patio that we just put up last summer is gonna be that tower. The first thing they are gonna see is that. Mm -hmm. The first thing my 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 uh, my customers in the restaurant will see looking out to the bay is that tower, mm -hmm. and it, it's just it's just shocked me that I saw that at all. I, I but uh, you know that's you know that's it's part of uh, you know I I just don't know why they they would they put that up, but it's that's not up to me. Um, I understand that um you guys have some decisions to make. Um, what can we do about this? Well, I, I've got, uh, if you look at page five, the last page of what I gave you, it shows, um, it just shows, uh, it shows there's got to be another spot for this on page 21 of your packet, also on that page five of mine that I gave you, it shows six utility poles and the reasons why each choice has been discarded. Poles two and three have been denied because of existing tree coverage. My belief is that either one of these two poles can do the job if the trees can be trimmed out, thus eliminating the, the need for a new 45 foot unsightly pole. Okay. It can be fixed. It, it, the question I would like you to ask yourselves and, and each other is, does it have to be on that spot? Does it, is it, is it absolutely gotta be there? Because, you know, it, like I said, I'm, I'm, I got selfish reasons for it, but I've also got <laughs> reasons in my heart for it. I, All right. I don't agree with it. And, uh, okay. and, I, and I know you'll make the right decision. And whatever decision that is, uh, I respect all of you uh, and your public service. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> Jamie turned it off. <laughs> Jamie turned it off. <laughs> It was really loud. So the, you can you can pay Jamie later. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody else? Public comment on the agenda items. Anybody online? Okay. Very good. With that, we're going to move ahead to discussion items. <clears throat> the first item on our agenda is the uh, Sadaba uh, Aaron Gobark Parade. You have that packet uh, in front of you. Uh, basically, I'd like to highlight that all necessary department approvals have been given and the final step is approved. It will be approved or denied by council. So all department approvals have been given. Any questions? Uh, go ahead. Yep. Oh, I, I noticed on page five that those boxes aren't checked off. Mm -hmm. Has public works and police and the fire district uh, reviewed and approved this? 
Yep, and our notes here, it says specifically that Superintendent Herbert, so Scott, Lieutenant Ensfield, Captain Betts, and the Sogtuck City staff with, uh, have attended a virtual event pre-planning meeting with Alec um, and Sadaba to go over the details of the parade, specific expected expectations and any questions. Kate, do you have anything you wanna add about um, that? No, yeah, it was just a quick Zoom meeting um, with Alec and we went over parade details. Um, and I received, I mean, I can include it in the next packet, the email approvals. Um, okay. So that was super preferred. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, nor normally we'd see that those boxes checked off on, on these uh, applications. Yep. Uh, no, sir. This is for council discussion. So, yeah. Anything else? Pretty straightforward. I look. I would like to point out. I listened to the fire board meeting um, that they had Monday at four o'clock, and uh, there's been some discussion about uh, parade safety and protocol. Uh, there's a draft white paper that is going to be coming our way. I've asked that that be shared with everybody so folks could read it. Um, so be looking for that um, since there's been some time and study given to that. Um, so just a heads up on that. Anything else about the parade? As it is, the email will be coming to us on Monday with everybody's approvals. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Anything else? All right, very good. Next item I have is Mountain Town on Tour. Center for the Arts signage request. You want to add anything, Madam? Um, no, pretty straightforward. It's just going to be a banner placed um, under the Sucker Tuck Pallet sign for about 15 days. Um, and then there will be some uh, yard signs um, and the map you'll see is attached with their proposed locations. They said it's the same as what they do for their market. Um, those are the same signage locations, so. Okay, any questions? Go ahead. Yeah, just a quick one, Kate. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, I think there was some discussion about um, Tibetan prayer flags being sort of displayed like on Butler Street or maybe one of the streets. Maybe that was dropped. From the I think it play. was dropped. Yeah, they have not mentioned that. Okay. Okay. Any other? This is an annual request that's come across a couple times now. Anything else? I'm a big fan of mountain film. Yes. <laughs> They're trying their very best. That to... is coming back. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna to move to C. Let me get my stuff out of the way. We'll move that to the end. So we can really dig into that. All right, I have, and I'm glad Peter timed it very well. He's hiding back there behind the podium. The first thing I have up is the resolution number 220228-A for the truck purchase. Say anything? Or Peter, go on ahead. Go for it. So usually we do all these resolutions in July, right after the fiscal year starts. But the problem is anybody is spent by a car a lot, there's no vehicles in a car a lot. So the first one is for 23 GMC, that's the red pickup trucks we drive. Every other fiscal year we purchase a new truck through the state purchasing price. Um, and we started with the big cloud truck to start. And I said, well, I better check on pickup trucks. We're around that. So I called the dealer that has the state bid for GMC slash Chevy in Detroit. He said, well, this is the problem. GM or price or whatever they call, it, they're not renewing their fleet purchase price with the state. And now I've been told Ford is not renewing the fleet purchase price. So the Chevy is still in negotiations with the state what the price is going to be. So we have no idea what the price is going to be and what's happening when these other two of the big three drop out of the state price. All these cities that had Dodges or Fords, well, they want the best price, so they're going to GMC or to Chevy. So basically, this resolution, we really don't have a firm price because the state, they're still negotiating the price. We're all we're trying to do, it doesn't guarantee us a vehicle, it's just saying we're giving in line, we're raising our hand that we want a truck. And we will know at a later date. So basically, what we need is to approve this resolution so we can just get in line. And if that fails, then we're going to be out to basically a bid price for the pickup truck. Who knows 
we want if they're available, what, what we can do. So that's why we have this resolution now, not in July. Okay. Any so we've got all three of these, but let's take them one at a time. Any and this is a this is on the did yeah. you see the red or red pickup truck, the replacement one. Okay. So this that you just went around is not that red trick of pickup oh, that's truck. The, uh, that's the international. So this is yeah. this first one, A, truck purchase. So yeah. basically it's the same kind of thing. We need to get in line. We need to get in line. Okay, not, and it, <laughs> I've heard so many stories about the prices of things going up. So not to exceed 42,000. Yeah, so yeah, that's the price. Well, the, price, the dealer basically when I talked to rep, the, you know, the guy that has the contract, he told me to, so in, we paid, the last pickup truck we bought was in 20, it's a 2020, we paid $36,400 for it. Mm -hmm. That was a pickup truck with the Tommy gate, it's on the tailgate. Mm -hmm, so yeah. we're going to upgrade, Scott wants to upgrade from a three quarter ton to a one ton, so because of the salt spreader. So he said, take that price from two years ago and $1,500 and a three to $4,000 window on, the price is going up, so that's where I come up roughly of no more than a forty-two thousand dollar. Okay, and this um, and that's what the state bid price. Hopefully, GM doesn't back out. So he didn't think it would do that. Okay, in GM's base in Michigan. So all right, but he wasn't. He said I can't get, but they're still in the, and it's not on the state's website. Twenty-three price. Firms. All right. Other questions for Peter on that first item. And this will be in the budget this next fiscal year. Yeah, that's the next that's to be paid out of the budget. So wouldn't it, when we get the truck, it wouldn't even be delivered until possibly November, December of 22. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would be in the 23 fiscal year appropriate budget. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Peter, quick question. I, I don't think Scott's on the call, but uh, he'll be here Monday night. Maybe you can answer this question is, um, I know there's a fair amount of build out on these trucks. They, they buy the chassis and then I think Scott, along well, with the, his, not on the pickup, truck, not the pickup, but on, yeah, but on the, the pickup, kind of just standard okay. whatever. It's just a work package, you know. The build out is that's the next B and C. Thank you. Okay. Good. Okay, so the next, next one, one. So that was that's the yeah. resolution A. Mm -hmm. Resolution B is for a dump truck, one of the big like the snowplow trucks that we have. Mm -hmm. Can I put that down there? Yeah. So, well, okay. So that that's yeah, that's the package of the truck. So basically, wow. So we have three of those trucks right now. And this new one would be a 2023 International, replacing the 2009. And we try to base these trucks lasting about 15 years for the lifespan. But this 2009 has had the salt spreader in it its entire. <clears throat> 15 or 14 seasons that we've had it. Because before they used to rotate, they'd get a new truck, they put the salt spreader. And Scott's theory was just to leave, do the damage to one truck, then these other two trucks, we might be able to stretch out three or four more years because the salt is what really destroys these trucks. Right. So that's what that 23 I ordered. And then okay. Scott has worked with the West Michigan International, which is the Grand Rapids. Um, specking out the truck. Um, basically, it's the truck and just the chassis, no belly blade, no box, no bells and whistles. It's just basically a truck with two wheels in the back. Mm -hmm. And that price was so. the price for the truck is just just right around ninety two thousand dollars. Okay. And all the add-ons for the box, the stainless steel box, the belly blade, the flashing lights. Um, all the hookups, so we have a front plow, we have, a, it's plumbed in the front, we have a big boom that we take to the beach, and that's another add-on of $77,000 for a total package of that truck of $170,000. So that truck would be paid for with all those, all the build on it in the fiscal year 23, maybe 24. The problem is right now, we order the truck, the truck is not scheduled to be built until November of 22, deliver sometime, a year from now, we wouldn't even have the truck with just the bed and the engine till probably February, March of 23. Okay. And then once they get it, they send it to the other place in Grand Rapids to do all the build on it. So this truck would not go into service until probably maybe December of 23, but reality is probably January 24, February. So two years out, these trucks are right now. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm new to this. Uh, what does the city typically do with the 2009 truck once we're done with it? When we're done with it, in the past, we sold one. There's really no three or four thousand dollar value on the last one. I think the last one we sold the Cal Lake. I don't know if they still have it. They had a project that went on for like three or four grand. The one before that, the drive shaft, it was, we got 1500. There's really because of the salt. The 15, they don't have a lot of miles. The engine probably should have some farmer one to yank out the engine, but. Mm -hmm. There, you know, if we get three to five thousand dollars for it, we'll be lucky. This one probably not because it's the salt is really taking a number on everything on it. Okay. Yeah. It, yeah. And then, thanks, Lana. That's a good question. The question I want to ask uh, Scott is: This is a great opportunity for him to kind of learn from the past with the other trucks and kind of build a truck out that's going to meet the needs of the city. You know, for the next presumably ten to fifteen years. So I know Scott will be on the call on Monday. I'd be curious to kind of hear what his highlights are, what he's been able to achieve with this new build that he doesn't have with his current trucks. Maybe you know, but. Oh, well, really, the only thing, the really, the only big thing different than they brought, to, I mean, there's some more neon or LED lights that are flashing in the state. You know, all the state semi stone they are all flashing green now. And, and that's just engineering. That's all, that would be all up to date where the DOT specs are on that. He did order a larger, the belly blade right now has always been 10 foot. That is going to come with a 12 foot blade. Um, any other bells and whistles like, you know, heated seats or something. Scott might be like, I don't, I mean, there's a list attached to that with five pages. It's quite lengthy, yeah. Quite lengthy. And I, you know, I don't, I think he's got everything basically. Like Still does have roll of windows. We did, we talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> roll of windows. So. Well, it does have a key fob. I know yeah. that. <laughs> so Kate, Kate made a note of that and she'll get it to Scott so that he's prepared for that question okay. on Monday. It's always good to give him time to be ready for those types of questions. So we'll get him that question so you all have that answer. Okay, okay. any other on, on B? All right, moving forward then to C. Okay, C. I'm for a new salt spreader that goes in the back of the large dump truck. The current one that we have, we purchased in November of 2012, so it's been in service since for 10, basically 10 seasons. It's still in decent shape, but he wants to, we don't want to get in a situation we did a lot of maintenance on this year. He just wants to get an upgrade, and possibly selling this one that we currently have once we have this in place. Or maybe having two salt spreaders to see after we get over the season and keeping this the older one we have in 2012 and have two salt spreaders in our truck. But you know, that's just an idea being floated around right now. We just want to get in line. Mm -hmm. This is another thing, this is not deliverable for maybe wow. anywhere from eight months to out to 15 months. So okay. and he's just concerned it's 12 years old, and if something goes wrong, it's not like somebody has one of these on the shelf. We can't go borrow somebody else's because they're using at the same time we are. So, but um, the way I read this, our funds were already appropriated. Yeah, for the funds are appropriated for that in the current for this current year right now. And so the salt spreader basically all pulled out would be about twenty thousand okay. dollars. So what's interesting in, in November of 12, we only paid 11.3 for that one house. The prices, and probably the technology has not changed too much in stainless steel salt spreader. Right? It's almost double okay. 10 years. It's about a 7 or 8% increase per year. Okay. And I, I found it of interest to note in the uh, write up that we're still using a V snow plow that was purchased back when Bruce Simonson started back in the yeah, mid 60s. Right. And that's, that's not the V plow, so it's older. Nobody, yeah. that he started 65, they were here yeah, it's probably by Salt Brian before him. So that's pretty amazing. It's an antique. It should be over in the history center once we're done with it. Yeah. And it's yeah. actually what's it worth it. Maybe, you know, you could maybe take it to like one of these equipment auctions or put it on a credit list, maybe some farmer or somebody in Canada or out west where they don't, mm -hmm. you know, but it's really, in the reason Scott's reason why we really need to get one of these replaced is the company, Root Spring, was based in Kalamazoo for the last 100 years. They're closing the doors this year. The family's moving on. So, and they used to provide all the snow plows for basically everybody in North America. So, mm -hmm. the part of things we always had probably a thousand dollars worth of parts with these three plows. Um, we took them to Harrington probably here seven, eight years ago. And they put the sand glass and welded them up and went through and changed out a lot of things. Mm -hmm. for, you know, I don't remember what the bill was, but I mean, we don't even know how old they are. What they what they were worth. So that's okay. that plow right there. It's what 11.5, and that should probably last Scott's year. Mm -hmm. so, 
Well, if there's other a shining example of using taxpayer dollars effectively, this would be, <laughs> in my opinion, one yeah. of them. Yeah. To use a piece of equipment for that long is pretty amazing. Right. And this one also would stop because this I just got the updated quote that that plow. Now they have this plow. Something's changed. It's got a cutout so you can get closer to the mailboxes and not hit the mailboxes. And somehow it's got some kind of a mm. cutout in the plow. Oh. So right now. Well, that was way up here, so they can't get close to the curb. Well, now they can get apparently the top is knocked out of the way, so they're not knocking out mailboxes, newspaper boxes. Mm -hmm. so, these newspapers, so that's something they can improve in the last week. <laughs> yeah, so, very good. Yeah, that would make a lot of constituents happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, just one quick one. Um, it appears the legal review was performed by our previous attorney. I don't know if that matters or not. Is this just boilerplate or? Yeah, that's just boilerplate. I think you know, we just took the ones okay. we had in the past. You know, mm -hmm. that's and I didn't want to put their name, the new law firm's name on it because they really okay. Right, Jeff yeah. Slugget's office that did them, and that's okay. if it's just that's changing our ordinance or the, there. Or so. yeah. If it's just routine, I'm not concerned. Yeah. So the time that this was originally discussed. Bloom slug it were our attorneys. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, basically, I went back from for the last four or five trucks, and it's just it's been boilerplate that we just okay. change the model, not years, and the updates. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Any other questions? So um, before you go, so Kate's written down that one question. Do you all have any other questions that Scott can get a heads up on to answer your questions Monday evening? This way it'll help him be organized. No? And then we can send him off to bed early. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know he'll appreciate it. So that. the only thing I want to bring up is back on number A, if the GM doesn't have, does not go into the state, negotiate mm -hmm. with the state of Michigan with the purchasing price. I don't know. Basically, we'll be back probably in the next mm -hmm. sometime in the next few months. And we're gonna to have to go out to bid. And Scott's gonna to to decide, you know, what, what put a bid to. Ford, a local Ford dealer, a local Chevy dealer, and a local mm -hmm. Dodge dealer, and I don't, and see who has, you know, they want yeah. to stick with red trucks, but I think we'll be in good shape because the other place that's got red trucks is MDOT, and the dealer provides a lot of trucks, and he always orders, he says, anywhere from 15 to 18 extra trucks, because it's just, you'd be surprised the number of MDOT trucks that get in the entire state that get totaled out in mm -hmm. years time, so wow. I sure. think we'll be in good shape, but you never know price pricing, sure. because then $42,000 isn't going to cover it. Yeah. We're not in the fleet pricing of the state of Michigan. So. Yeah. All right. Great. Okay. Any, any other questions for Peter along the lines of these purchases? No? Okay. All right. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, yeah. Thanks Peter. Real quick, I'm going to apologize and go back to David. David, did you have a comment that you wanted to make about the parade? Yes, yeah, just a quick one. Uh, okay. Uh, I, Alex, can you talk to Scott about, about the details? I, I thought so. Yes, yeah, that's okay. okay. Yeah. My, my question was, was about this home second home. Mm -hmm. that kind of, that yep. Kind of yep. Like that. yep. Yep. Okay. Why don't I have you? The, yeah, they'll they, be. It will be, or. or yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll talk we'll to you after the meeting. Yeah. Well, we have Kate touch base with yeah. you afterwards. No worries. Okay. Yep. All right. Very good. With that, I think I'm on to um, small cell application. Kate, I can turn that to you, or you want Cindy to introduce it, or start with you and then go to her? <clears throat> yeah, um, I, I'll start it, and then um, if Cindy wants to speak about it. Um, so this was, I mean, this has been in a process for a while. Um, it was originally proposed to Historic District Commission on September 2, um, 2021. Um, they reviewed the original location, which would have been in the park, um, and historic district preferred that it would be um, on the other side of the entrance. So they approved it um, in that location. So um, Fred Lowe and, and Verizon and those engineers were working in that time frame to determine the best location um, and working with the engineering and so on. So they determined this location. We got all our all of our needed um, application pieces and now it is being presented to council. Um, Cindy, is there anything you would like to add? Plus that um, Act 365 and 366 were passed by the state of Michigan that does not us allow us to treat them any differently 
than, for example, the consumer power polls. So we have to treat everybody equally and we do not have design standards for the utility polls. In fact, you can see one new one was just put up right in front of City Hall recently. Yep. Uh, th there is some room on that in the right of way to put that utility pole. And um, I think the best way to look at it is to look at the photo simulations that um, Fred sent over. And Mayor, it looks like we have Mr. Lowe on the, yep. on the yes. line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm gonna let Cindy finish. Yeah. Anything else to add? Cindy, do you wanna, any kind of historical commission summary that you wanna provide? No, there's really not a lot that the city can do. This is a state law that says you have to treat them the same as you treat consumer power poles. They have the same right to use the right of way as other utilities. Um, real quick before Fred, before I have you comment. So I was on historic commission when this first came up and it wasn't, so I just want to provide a little bit of background. It wasn't a decision that was like discussed that night and decided that night. It actually started many, many months before that. Uh, Cindy might know exactly. The original proposal or request, if you will, that Verizon came to us with had the poll literally over here in the park and would have required some alterations to trees, which we all know how we feel about the trees in the park. So at that time, after a pretty good discussion, historic commission members said, could you find an alternative location that would not affect our park in some way? And so this is when they came back with the proposed location, which they have in the packet. So it was several months. Um, it wasn't a decision that happened that night. Um, and it was the understanding uh, the 6 0 vote was with the understanding that it would be the alternative location, not where they originally proposed. With that, Cindy, anything to add that I forgot on that? I don't think so, Garnet. Thank you. Um, I, I think Fred can answer any questions All about right. the um, actual poll. All right. So now I'm going to turn it to Mr. Lowe. Hi, Mr. Lowe. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Very good. Would you like to comment on this? Um, I just like to reiterate um, what's in the packet. Uh, we did consider uh, existing polls and whether or not we could co-locate on them. Uh, we did provide reasoning of why those were uh, not uh, deemed viable as alternate locations. Um, and we're trying, as always, we, we are trying to balance the uh, need to the community from a communication standpoint, while we're also sensitive to the um, character of the, the areas that we are going into. Um, the location that's in the proposal packet now uh, was a compromise for the historical society um, that we made in order to accommodate uh, what they felt was in the best interest um, of the area. Um, at the end of the day, we, we, I'm charged with finding some place that will work technically, and you all are charged with, uh, with finding some place that is uh, least impactful. Um, and I believe that is the uh, proposed location that we have been able to, to identify uh, by going through that process. And as I think Cindy and, and you indicated, this was not something we decided in three days. We've been working on this for several months uh, to find the best option um, for this location. Uh, one, one item I was gonna say, uh, this power to this particular site will be provided by Consumers Energy. Uh, we've requested that power design and we requested it to be underground to minimize the visual impact uh, of an overhead line. Uh, consumers almost always has us go under line for uh, or underground for that uh, that power sourcing. Um, so it should be very similar to what you see in the um, photo simulations. And I'll answer any other questions you all have. Happy to, to be here. I appreciate you including me in the call. All right, all right. I think we'll have a bunch of questions. So who wants to go first? Great. 
May, may I make yeah, it? Scott. Um, Mr. Lowe, can you give us a sense, maybe if, if someone calls up the map, kind of what the feasible area where where any tower could be located? We've already approved a few, and I think we, we understand you, you need overlapping coverage to cover the entire city, but kind of what is the, you know, if you could draw a circle around the area that sort of needs to be the landing spot for this antenna to, to accomplish the mission, that would probably help us narrow down our discussion. Oh, okay. Um, basically what happens when we start our design, uh, I'm gonna just take you back in time just a little bit. Um, our RF engineers run a computer computer simulated model of the area that they're trying to service in and they tell us where they want to go. We do have some latitude as to where we can go, um, but that circle that you're talking about is no more than 200 feet um, that they're trying to get that uh, RF operation where they want it. Um, I went back in this particular case when we decided to move for the historic district's um, recommendations and because of the direction we moved and the topography around the area they were trying to cover, they approved that move. Um, so there is some latitude, but again, we're, we're looking to be in that downtown area to give those businesses the coverage that, that Verizon feels that they need to improve their service. And, and Mr. Lowe, I'm gonna quickly add, this is to supplement the two cell towers that we've already approved, right? The one that's going down on Spear, and then I think it's elsewhere. It basically forms a triangle. Is that my understanding? Yes, for, for the most part. These small cell, this we call these installations small cell installations. They're they're 4G in this in these instances. Um, so the technology is the same as what is on uh, the larger towers, like the, the 200 foot towers that would be serviced in the other areas. Um, in these situations, the RF engineers fully realize that building a 200 foot pole in this area to improve the coverage is, is not desirable. Um, so these small cells allow them to almost target areas that they are trying to improve service to that's that's hurting the system right now and at, in a targeted approach improve the service just in that area without greatly impacting the um the area with a, a larger tower so if, go ahead yeah, yeah. Uh, just to try to hone in on this a little bit more sir um you know i, I know you can't draw a circle for us but are you basically saying to, to do the coverage that we need, uh, it, it needs to be somewhere kind of within this kind of wedge between, is it? Yeah, you see the circle? There's a yellow, yellow circle. circle. But the, the circle is only 75 foot in diameter. And it looks like you guys tried other spots. So are we sort of looking at a wedge between, is that, is that Mason Street? Yeah. So are we sort of looking at a, at a wedge between, you know, Mason Street and then Butler Street going down where we need to find a location for, for, for coverage? Yes, in general, that statement is. Go ahead, Lauren. So um, thank you, Mr. Lowe, for being here. Um, I was just curious about some of the questions that we've received and, you know, just some questions I had about existing poles and your reasoning behind not being able to use existing poles. Um, there were a couple of spots where tree trimming was the issue that there's trees, you know, in the way. Um, if trees were trimmed, would that mean we could put put this on an existing pole? Just as a question. It, 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 here's the problem with with that situation that we've run into. Um, the level that we need the trees trimmed to is problematic. Um, and most um, jurisdictions are, are avoid basically cutting down a tree in order to make our system function. Um, so if, if you're saying that you're willing to remove the trees so that we can have an antenna that's not impeded, 
um, then the answer would be sure. We could consider that, but I, it's a rarity when somebody offers that on the plate. Mm -hmm. And then just to follow up real quick on that, the, um, the pool that is currently in the park, um, at one point the historic district had said, you know, that they didn't want the pool, a new pool right next to that current pool. Was there any reason why we can't be on the existing pool? We would love to be on that existing pole. Unfortunately, Consumers Energy, that pole is a primary feed with transformers on the pole itself, and Consumers Energy will not allow us to co-locate on that type of pole. Thank you. I appreciate it. Go on yeah. ahead, Russ. Thank Russ. you. So to uh, just kind of jump off on um, Lauren's comments, so if I read through the legend that you provided, one, four, five, and six are off the table because the utility will not allow me to co-locate because of the either, they're just not allowed. There's an existing transformer. So that leaves us with choices two and three, which were just mentioned by Lauren, which I think are on private property, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so if those are out of the mix as well, because if the trees are not gonna be removed, then are we looking at potentially maybe putting this on top of someone's building? Um, has that option been explored or is that even a possibility in a situation like this? Do you understand what I'm asking? It, 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 in this type of situation, the proposal is to go in the public right of way. So I am um, relegated by being able to locate something within the public right of way. And that's according to the Act 365 and 366 that's Cindy referenced. Thing with yes. The right away. Correct. So, yeah. that, so to correct, that does not allow us to look at a private location for this. It's got to be in the public right away. Well, let's let them know. Is that right? Is that right? Cindy? Yeah. Red? Yeah. Cindy's not, I, I think you yeah. Yes, the, those public acts of 2019 just specifically address public right of way. So it could be located on private property. It it's only not, go ahead, go ahead, Cindy. It's not pro, it's not prohibitive to be located on private property, but those acts speak to the public right of way and being treated just the same as other utilities in the right of way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Well, that's kind of what I understood that if you're in the public right of way, you can't treat this any differently than any other utility. Right. But it doesn't preclude you from looking at private placement. It is correct. They can look at private property and see if there's um, a place on a building that they could locate, but they don't, they're not mandated to do that. Right. Right. Other questions, Ken? Hey, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Fred. Oh, I, I just had a question on that point. So if, um, and again, this is going back to the public act, the, the idea in the public act is that um, we would be able to access the public right of way similar to a utility. Um, so if you're, I believe I'm correct in saying if the premise is that if this was a consumer's energy wanting to put a pole here and you would make them go to a mm -hmm. private property, then that makes some sense and holds some merit. But if if you're saying that, oh, but because it's you, we're gonna treat you a little bit differently and push you to private property, that's going to be a problem. Right, I, that, that is not what I'm saying. <clears throat> well, I'm just trying to get clarification of what the public act really speaks to in this situation and what we're being presented with. That's okay, it. thank you, Ken. Yeah, I'm wondering if um, in the future, another provider, AT&T or whomever, wanted to uh, put this uh, similar kind of service in place, will, your, will you or Verizon share that with another provider? Yes, I, if it, yeah, if it's technically feasible, they would have to. To be able to co-locate other structures, yeah, because they and would they operate to... on 
it, it's similar to a tower. Uh, 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 a, uh, again, a 200 foot tall tower. They all have to uh, allow each other to co-locate on their structure as long as it's technically feasible to do so. So Fred, this is Garnet again. Uh, quickly regarding the, it's a 40 foot pole. Is that what we're looking at? Yes, ma'am. Is that the absolute minimum height? Uh, that's actually been reduced from our initial request. And we had the RF folks go back and this is a reduction from the original request. To follow up on that, could it be shorter? I'm just trying to get information. Would it, uh, would it obstruct? No, from what, RF, from what the RF engineers um, have performed in their analysis, um, this is the height that they need uh, to get there. And, and we went back um, at the behest of the Historical Society and reduced our initial request after doing an additional additional analysis on the RF propagation. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Fred while we have them? Well, if, Go ahead. if, if we're done talking about sort of the Technical. location, would you like to entertain some questions about the parking spot that's there? That's fine. Sure. Yeah, uh, Fred, how much of that parking spot do you need you know would we lose an entire vehicle parking spot or could that be located in such a way that we could at least stripe it for for motorcycles to you know we have a huge parking issue in the, in the city uh do you really do you need the entire spot do you need the bullard for some sort of compliance or safety reason yes the the, the bullards are included specifically because in our experience, when we're in this type of situation, that uh, uh, pole becomes a magnet um, for vehicles uh, for whatever reason. Uh, so the ballers are there basically to, to protect the pole from being knocked over for lack of a term. Now this is a slow um, speed area, so I don't anticipate anybody wiping the complete pole out. Uh, we'd minim we'll minimize that footprint as much as we can, um, and we'll work with the city on that, but there has to be some protection for the pole. And if we were taxed by the Historic Society when we designed this to only take one parking spot, um, and that's, that's how we designed it. Okay. General discussion. Anybody? Go ahead. I guess I guess I would just like to thank the residents that came mm -hmm. to speak yeah. today. I mean, obviously we're in a in a between a rock and a hard shoe because, you know, we all know that we can't text on July fourth downtown. You get your text three days later. Mm -hmm. um, we're we're trying to provide um, better um, cellular service. Um, it sounds like we have limited. Um, agency as a city to direct a utility where they may or may not go. I, I believe that they are allowed to put this pole in no matter what is mm -hmm. my understanding. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Well, I, no, I don't think so. So here we cannot treat them any differently than we treat consumers when they come in and put a pole. So if if consumers were to come and say that is where a poll needs to go, then that's we can't treat them any different according to the acts. Cindy, do you want to add anything to that? So if they come in and say this is a necessary service, we have to put a poll there. We really, in all um, intents and purposes, cannot say no. Go ahead, Cindy. That, that is correct. However, there's one um, thing that I don't think Fred even knows about yet. But a survey of that right-of-way line says that it could go in the grassy area behind the curb. So if we can pull that off with a survey, we would prefer that location. Okay. All right. So that's that's it, that's. It, yeah, and my my response to that is we would we would be 
very open to that possibility to save that parking space, get that pole on the other side of the curb. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as it's indeed in the public right of way, we can make that happen. Okay. All right. So well, it's, don't have, yeah, Mayor, is that an action item then for, for Cindy? Can we research that and try to get mm -hmm. some clarity on that? Yes, we, we can do that. We do have a survey from the, uh, when the street work was done for the water upgrade that shows that the um, Singapore fence is actually in the right of way. So there is room, Kate and I went and took a look at it this afternoon and um, it looks like there's plenty of room there. You can see where they put the new pole in front of city hall, how tight of a spot it was. And that is, bigger than where they put the new utility pole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's Other, good news. We'd yeah. like to see that. Mm -hmm. Other questions, comments, discussion? I, I, guess I, think, I, I guess I think it's just important for us to remember, you know, we surveyed the community mm -hmm. and I think the number one issue that came out of our strategic planning session yeah. was the need for improved mm -hmm. uh, telecommunications bandwidth within the city. Yeah. Um, you know, I consider it a critical infrastructure issue and frankly, it's a public safety issue mm -hmm. when people can't, you know, make an emergency contact. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if Verizon wants to build out their network to have coverage for the entire city, you know, th there's a small wedge within the city where it appears mm -hmm. that just to make this happen, technically it needs to go in. So we need to find someplace. I don't wish to put anybody out, but, mm -hmm. you know, part of our job is to make tough decisions sometimes. And we've got to find a spot for it, in my view, somewhere within mm -hmm. this yeah. fairly tight area between Mason Street and Butler Street and the mm -hmm. river. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody else? And maybe just asking questions on behalf of mm -hmm. the residents that are in here. Um, he made note about, uh, you know, taking out an entire tree as opposed to tree trimming. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference there? Can limbs be trimmed on some of those other spots? I'm only asking mm -hmm. on behalf of the residents. Right. Yeah. Fred, do you want to comment on that? Um. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the point I was trying to make is by the time we trim a tree back uh, enough to get the pole to an acceptable location and then keep it down, yeah. um, typically is not good for a tree. Mm -hmm. um, and you got to, the amount of trimming we would have to do to the trees that are beside the two poles you're pointing to is going to be substantial. And to my mind, it's not, it's going to um, one, damage the tree, which is unavoidable, but two, it's going to change the way that tree looks to an extent that there's, it may or may not be logical to have the tree there, is the point of trying to make. Trees are great for the way they look, but you go to trimming them to make room for, um, for our equipment, it doesn't always have the desired effect that you think. Great, thanks, Fred. All right, go ahead, Ken. Well, still, I'd like to see some of those options studied. I mean, it might aesthetically be better to take a tree out someplace than to put this right in the middle of our our viewscape here. Um, I'm, I don't know if it is. I didn't walk it to see whether these trees are, you know, in, that I don't know how to put it, but mm -hmm. um, I think it's conceivable that, that that might might be a solution. This is all about aesthetics, and uh, you know I would trade maybe a tree for the, for not putting a pole in the middle of uh, this wonderful view that people have of our uh, environment. So Fred, this is Garnet regarding the trees. Which tree or trees were looked at? Do you know, or does Cindy know which trees were looked at? I don't, re I don't remember from this discussion months and months ago. Do you recall? Two and three on the map. Two and three on the map. But at the corner where Marl's, yeah, it's, at the yeah, corner it's, of Marl's. 
Frank, 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 it's in between your patio and your building, right? It's just north of the main building. It's in between oh, yeah. the, the main building and the north building that has some sort of okay. There's two poles that are two and three. On um, one of the trees is on our property. Two of the trees are on right away. Uh, are on, uh, easement? The pole or, or, For an easement? The poles are yeah. They're right, next, it's right next to the pole. We're willing to dust the tree that it's on our property. Because it's a black walnut tree and it's it's, it's a hazard. Okay. It's dropping those bombs all <laughs> I've had to. <laughs> so you know we're, we're willing to do that. We're willing to let them take that one out. You know, and and the other tree, the other tree looks like it can be uh they can be worked with. The tree needs to be, he might be worried about. We're not worried about taking it out. We had to take half of it out, put the pergola in anyway. And we're still worried about the, the walnuts falling on all the turbo, which is all right. considerable money. All right, Fred, you heard all that? Mm, I heard some of it. Okay, yeah, it's hard. So I'll reiterate, he's in the audience. So um, Mr. Morrow is here from Morrow's. Locations number two and three on the map that were given to us, you had a legend. And number two said existing yes. tree coverage hinders signal propagation. And then number three, existing tree covers uh, coverage hinders signal propagation. Uh, Mr. Mara was saying he'd be more than happy to give up that number two location because it's a really bad tree that drops bombs all over his lot. So is that, yeah, yeah. Is that, would that be a, a compromise or an alternative? It, it's possible. We would, we would have to review that Okay. under that premise that the tree could be removed and i think that's not a a incorrect ask a incorrect ask okay um because if we we would always rather co-locate on an existing structure it makes everything simpler for us um so if, if we will go back and survey that and run that through and then talk to Cindy about the, uh, the specifics about what that would entail. Okay, go ahead. Well, I think we're, I think we're getting somewhere, which is great. I love um, solutions. But let's just be clear. Um, I love solutions. Do, do you think what we would need to remove both two and three? Um, is, is, is that the likely outcome if, if that is a solution to remove two and three to allow it to be mounted on an existing pole? So both would have to be removed. That what you're I think that's the question. Yeah, got it. That's got it. Exactly. I want. To, he's thinking about it. Yeah. It, it, Go it's ahead, a Fred. Or or, yeah, Go I ahead, haven't Fred. stood on. Oh, I was just going to say I haven't stood on that site for about six months now, so I'm trying to remember uh, the tree coverage. Um, and honestly, I never even thought brought into my mind that somebody would be willing to remove a tree. So we got to look at it through that lens. Um, it's not something I could answer today, honestly. Okay, hold on for a sec. Mr. Ma, I want you to cut, it's hard to hear. If you want to come up to the microphone and explain to Fred what's there. Yeah, there's actually three trees there. Uh, there's two poles that are about seven, eight feet apart from each other. And the, neither one of them has electric as a, as an electrical consumers power uh, transformer on it. The, the, only, the only reason you gave, uh, for those poles were the hindrance of the of the trees mm -hmm. um, and the big tree is on our property right uh just uh i would say mm -hmm. east of that east of the sidewalk yeah. and then the other two trees are sitting north of mm -hmm. number th number three number two and three they're they're, yeah. they're north of that Four and, and uh and if you if you see them now, you know, of course, there's no leaves on them or anything like that, but um, it looks like you'd ha probably have to take out one of the trees. So the other tree probably would, would be fine. But okay. there are, um, the thing is, when, when we get uh, our internet at the restaurant, we, we, uh, they, they, put the, they put the wires through, uh, from across the street, through the trees onto those, onto those poles. Mm -hmm. So we would not be we wouldn't mind that all being gone anyway because our, our reception our, our wireless system is goes down at the worst times all 
we've been working on trying to get it fixed for for a few years now and oh okay it's it's been an issue so. all right thank you so fred can i propose this that um i don't know what the timing of this would be if you could come back and take a look at those trees number two and number three and see if their removal will enable you to put up a poll that would basically propose what's that will basically replace what was proposed in this today. So it would move from across the street next to Fred's building or next to uh, Mr. Morrow's building. And I think there's an existing pool. It's an existing pool. Yeah. It could be a co-location situation. I'm, I'm asked like with the removal of one of the trees. Yeah. Is that possible for you to get back this way anytime soon? Yes. And, and the pasha, the caveat to being able to co-locate on the existing pole is for the pole owner to allow us to do it. So okay. as it's not a conservative energy pole, we will have to find uh, the pole owner and have that conversation with them as well. Okay, very good. All right, good. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. We can table this. We won't discuss it on Monday. <laughs> we'll let everybody do their due diligence. Cindy, you good with that? I'm good with that. All right, very good. Very um, good. Just, had, just yep. out of curiosity, when, when is the, I know Monday won't be, it won't be discussed. When is the next meeting after that? Um, our next workshop is the 9th of March. So what's the following Monday? 14th. 14th? Mm -hmm. 14th of March. How's that work? Okay. All right. We will try to put pedal down and get some uh, information ready before that next workshop. Very good. Excellent. Thank you, Fred. Much appreciated. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. It's patience. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Of everybody. All right. I've lost my agenda. So it's <laughs> mine's a mess too. It's in here somewhere. Public comments. Let me find it. Public comments. Oh yeah. Public comments. So this is the opportunity for anybody who's with us. Come on up. Introduce yourself. Limit your comments to three minutes, please. He said, <laughs> you, you came, you conquered, you shall go forward. Anybody yeah. online? Go on ahead, David. David. Please introduce yourself, David. sir. I came here as a representative of the SDABA, but I didn't realize that there was this big issue with the cell tower application. And I think Mr. Barrow's idea of removing one of the trees, if that solves it, that happened. Mm -hmm. I know Webb Flexner here said maybe he had one of those mark on the and they're just a mess. <laughs> they just drop them everywhere and they make stains and everything and they ruin the dirt and it just ruins it all for the house. So if that works, this is a really good solution. Mm -hmm. and having and having a better cell reception is really you mentioned that there was another tower, small one's going to go on on Spear Street somewhere. Yes, um, that was already approved. Yeah, two of them, Spear, and where was the other one? Francis, Francis, Francis. Francis. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would be so good. Yeah, because mm -hmm. our 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 our, our uh, coverage at our place is is just is mm -hmm. just awful like it is anywhere else in town. It just drops out all the time, and yeah. and it's just like you said, it's like two days from now you get the text. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I'm glad, I'm glad this this conversation mm -hmm. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Public comment? All right. Very good. Uh, I don't see any correspondence in the packet. Council comments. I'll start with Ken. No, thank you. All right, Polly? None at this time. Thank you, Mayor. None at this time. Russ? Uh, just a quick update. If you haven't noticed, the Sartuk signs neon is starting to fade out. If anybody has noticed, it was pointed out to me by a resident when I took a picture last night, sent it to Scott, Ryan copied the mayor. Scott's already got the work started to get it recharged. They have to recharge the neon about every four to five years. So if you hear from anybody that the Sartic sign is looking a little tired, it's been identified and will be repaired here shortly. So. All right, very good. Uh, I really wanna thank everybody for, uh, you know, folks for coming and talking and I appreciate councils willingness to really thoroughly find a solution to this. Uh, much appreciated because as everybody's mentioned, our constituents have been very clear um, that the cell, our Wi-Fi access is woefully lacking. 
And uh, so this feels like a really nice compromise and that's always really good to arrive at that. So um, I thank you very much. All right. Okay, with okay. that, meeting adjourned. Good.